Hi, I'm Mr. Hopflash, or Mr. H, as in so, or as in so. And I'm part of a cyber teacher team, and that's our logo. Um, today we're going to look at business study, strategic management, and we're going to look at the Bauman strategic clock. So let's on with it. Let's get going. Mr. T, can you please hit the play button for the jingle? We're looking at um, Cliff Bauman's strategic clock, and there are three interesting facts about this model. Um, the first one is it was developed in partnership with um, his colleague David Faulkner. They um, they were both economists. Now, an economist is an expert who studies the relationship between a society's resources and its production or output. Um, it can range. It can be a small or local community, or it can be an entire nation, or even the global economy. So. These guys were economists. It was purely designed to support the marketing function. And as you know, there's several other functions in business, um, finance, operation, relations. Um, there's eight and nine of these, but this is um, focusing on the marketing function. The main focus of this model is to make a company aware of their position in the market um, and how they compare to their competitors. So what they've done, you'll see later in this presentation, that they actually developed an a model on a graph um, with, with an X and Y axis, but we'll get to that in a moment. On these X and Y axis, it is all about two variables, the price and the perceived value to your customer. So let's have a look. There you have it on the X axis at the bottom. We've got the price from low price to high price. And um, on the left, on the Y axis, you've got low to high perceived value by the customer. So we start by Looking at the first position, the bottom is low price, low value added product. Then we move on to the low price product that still adds some value to the customer, but you start off on a low price point. Then we go on to the hybrid model. It's a very valuable new product in the market, but the price is fairly low still, and there's still some research and development going on. Then we move over to differentiation, where you differentiate your product from your competitors, and then we move on to focus differentiation, where you make a point of it to be different um, than any competitor out there in the market. And we'll look at some examples in the next slide. We move over then to risky high margins. We normally refer to profit margins, um, gross profit and net profit margins. So it's very risky, high priced items, normally in niche markets. Then we move on to monopoly pricing. Now, if you don't know what monopoly means, it's normally no, it's not the board game. It is um, normally economists or in economics we refer to monopoly as a single seller. Um, but in law, a monopoly is actually a business entity that has a significant market power. Um, that is the power to charge overly high prices. And they normally get away with that because there's no alternative. And then the last one we look at of the eight is the loss of market share. Now you'll see on the next slide, now these are eight positions. If you look at the next slide, I've color-coded all of these different positions. And I used traffic lights, um, red, orange, and green. As you can see there, if I was in your position running a company and you are losing market share, the red flag must go up. If you have a low price, but you also have a low value added to your customer, that could be a problem, unless if it's um, in a recession or that if you cater for a low socioeconomic um, segment of the market. And then if you keep on selling at a low price, you might at some stage um, experience some cash flow problems in your business. Now, if you look at the two orange arrows, the one on the left at the top, hybrid, um, you're still in development. So we know that um, value is high, but the price is low, but eventually you'll have to move it over um, to a higher price point um, in future. That's your hybrid model. And then monopoly pricing could be a problem. If you built a uh, monopoly at some stage, the government could step in with regulation and pull you back or open up the market for other competitors. Um, a few years ago, Microsoft was in that position and that changed after the government stepped in. And then if you can differentiate the green arrows or you can focus your differentiation on specific 
feature and benefit of your product or service, then you are definitely in a really good position. And then last one, risky high margins. You're going to make really good money as long as that niche market is there to support your product. Let's move on to the next one. Now, I've taken motor cars as examples. There's your hybrid model. There's a lot of um, electric cars in, in development in the market. They're still all in the R&D phase. Most automobile manufacturers know that they need to have a, a car in this part of the market. Otherwise, they might be in trouble in future. Now, uh, that's my hybrid model. Then we move on to this. is a Tesla S type motor car. Um, if you listen to Elon Musk and his way of thinking, he's an innovator. He likes to do things differently. And I think he made a point to develop a car that's different from what we've been used to, especially in the electric car market. Another example from Mr. Musk is the new Cybertruck he launched in end of 2019. Really interesting um, vehicle. It is definitely focused differentiation. Um, you don't see any other trucks out there with that kind of shape. It looks like something from a science fiction film. And it's actually really interesting um, that they came up with this example. And then the McLaren motor car that we see mostly in Formula One races, but some people also can afford to buy this. It's very, very risky because it's high margins, but there's definitely a market out there for high net worth individuals um, out in the global market. Then we move on to the monopoly pricing. Rolls-Royce has owned the market for a long, long time. And um, you might not be aware of that, but Rolls-Royce also make engines, jet engines for some of the Airbus and Boeing planes. So that's monopoly pricing. And then we move on to the, the reason why I've put the BMW X5 here, especially the diesel cars, there's a, quite a pushback from environmentalists and governments that we need to drive smaller cars. And especially with the, the problems we have in the global market with diesel, um, we know it's a dirty fossil fuel and governments have also started taxing these kind of vehicles highly. So this vehicle is definitely losing some market share. That's why you'll also see some and most of these car brands make smaller cars. Same version, but a smaller engine with a lower carbon footprint. And then that car, yes, low price, low perceived value. It's debatable as long as your car can take you from point A to point B. It does add value to your life. Um, but most cars in this second-hand market or pre-owned vehicle market will fall in that category. And then lastly, I've put this little Suzuki motor car here it's fairly low price high high value to the customer um, quite a sporty and classy little vehicle um, and that I think is still low price high value because it's an entry-level car it could be your first car or it could be your only car if you are new to market and that is the ad example so let's move on I've added this in and I, if you look at my little green crossover there this is how the electric cars will be sold in 2040. Um, we're in 2020. Now, if you look at the red line running across the orange bars, in 2025, 10% of all the motor cars that will be sold in the market will be electric vehicles. But what is really interesting, if you make a jump from 2025 to 2035, 10 years later, 30% of motor cars that are sold will be electric vehicles. So what, what does this mean? If you are a automobile manufacturer or car dealership, if you don't have any electric cars in your product range, you could lose up to a third of your sales revenue. 30%, you'll see that bar is nearly at 33%. That is a third of your total sales. So most vehicle manufacturers know that. That's why they're all busy developing um, some kind of electric car model. Okay, let's move on. As we're now talking about Elon Musk again and the Tesla motor car, this is Nikola Tesla. He was an inventor. He was actually um, a Serbian American inventor. And if you research his inventions, he's, he was also he, there's a long list of things that he designed and invented. And he was also working as an electrical and mechanical engineer. What was quite fascinating to me was 
looking at this quote, here he says, the present is theirs, the future for which I really worked, or really worked hard, is mine, which was interesting because this chap died in 1943. What was his legacy? I, I dropped in a little um, hyperlink at the bottom in the comment box. Please have a look at all his inventions. It is remarkable. Um, what I also find really fascinating is that Elon Musk and his fellow founders of Tesla decided they have to stick with the name Tesla, not change the name, um, because this is part of Nikola Tesla's um, legacy. So amazing that this chap had died years ago, but now because of him, we are seeing major innovations in the automobile industry. Okay, now can you name the eight positions of the Bauman Strategic Clock? You can now pause this video and write it down, make a list, or what you can do. I've also added in a blank slide. You can either just draw this on a piece of paper or you can screen print it or, or and try and print this off if you have a printer nearby and then test yourself. So let's move on. So what's Mr. H's handy hint for today? There you go. Use abbreviations or acronyms to remember the positions. Now, uh, I was lucky enough to go to university and I completed four university qualifications and I was lucky enough to get quite a few distinctions as well and this was how I got myself through university. I use abbreviations or acronyms. Now there, wait, let's just go one back. LPL, let's see if I can remember it without looking at my notes. It's low price, low value. That's the bottom left hand corner of the diagram. Then if you move, move up, that is low price, and then you move up to the hybrid, then differentiation, then focus differentiation, then we move on to risky, high margins, then we move down to the bottom right-hand corner that was monopoly pricing, and the last one was um, low market share. And that is actually the A. What I've done on the next slide, you can also try and do that. Just color code every second one, and that's where they go on the clock. The 9 o'clock position is low price, at the 12 o'clock position is differentiation at the three o'clock position is risky high margins and at the six o'clock position on the normal um, clock is six o'clock is low market share and that is it for today we are building more lessons one on SWOT analysis one on a product life cycle and one on Reiner's model um, and that will be out soon so if you like this please let us know either like um, the video or subscribe and we will then try and make more content and get you through your exams and make sure you achieve success in business studies. Thank you.